guys, we're back out in uh, one of our newer fields that we got this year. And uh, this field's kind of the end of the season field for me because it was one of my later fields and I kind of just needed some extra space for some crops to grow. So this is kind of the tail end of our season is down in this field. Got some nice brassicas behind us. River is down that way. Um, this has been a great field it's really flat there are some wet areas that we have seen this year uh, but we've done a lot of harvesting out of this field um, <clears throat> uh, what i want to do today is kind of give a tutorial of one of the crops we've been harvesting a lot of right now and that is leeks and i kind of want to just give a quick tutorial of kind of showing explaining of how these are harvested and kind of the growth of how we grew these and kind of the post-harvest procedures we procedures excuse me that we do with these uh they're a very profitable crop for me but there is a lot of labor that goes into the harvest of them and the procedure to getting them out the door um it's a great fall crop it's a really really hardy um might as well turn around and do some explaining here these are behind me we have two rows here I'm not really good with this hand thing ever so we got a row here and a row here. Uh, we grow them in rows of two in one bed. <clears throat> and they are 36 inches apart between rows. And then in row, we plant them about six inches apart. Uh, yeah, these are planted with our transplanter. I've really, for some reason, taken a liking to growing leeks. So I've taken a lot of care into this field. And, you know, right now, it doesn't look that pretty. Uh, but it's the middle of November. These have been in the ground since May, June. Um, you know, they've been through hell and back. They've been through rain, whatever, wind, disease, anything. Um, but all in all, we've kept a good, strong, hardy crop here since then. Uh, the leeks are very, very, very cold tolerant. These can withstand very hard frosts. They can actually be picked uh, all the way through winter as long as you can break the ground uh, which is pretty amazing um, with the looks of what's left out here I don't think I'll have these past maybe the end of this month even um, the anticipation was to have them through you know maybe December but they've been moving they've been flying people have been loving them um, so let me creep down here real quick we'll set this up so right here we have the leak plant uh, it kind of grows with a stock. These are the leaves, as you can see right here. Um, and this plant is actually buried pretty deep in the ground right here. Um, if we kind of go down here, we can even see a little better. Uh, you just went down about probably eight inches or so. What we do with leeks is we like to hill them. And what that means is we're pushing the soil up, up and over the stock. Uh, because we sell leeks, we like a long white stock at the base of it. That's kind of how the leeks are presented as we sell them wholesale. So a lot of what we do here is we got to pull these out of the ground first. Uh, we do a lot of hand pulling like this. I'll show you in a minute. Um, but there's undercutters that can go under and kind of cut the roots out uh, so they're easier to pull. Um, but it's just kind of a lot of hand work with this crop at, at this stage. Since then, there really hasn't been a lot of handwork since here. It's been a lot of cultivating. It's been, I think we came in here and weeded maybe once or twice by hand, pulling the weeds out. Um, my goal is to really keep this field clean because leeks uh, don't really have a good natural weed suppression for themselves. Uh, there was no herbicide applied here at all. Um, it was just a constant cultivation, probably about once a week. but. While I was cultivating, I was also hilling these up, um, which is kind of, you can see this hill structure here. So, uh, let's get to pulling some leaks. First thing is to have some nice gloves because it's freezing out today and I don't want my hands to get cold. So what we do with the leaks is I grab them, usually with my dominant hand, I'm lefty, grab them with my left hand. And some of these will pull up pretty easily with one hand, some with two. And as you can see right there, that long white stock, these have to be cleaned and peeled, I'll talk about that. Uh, but this long white stock is what we're looking at. And as you can see, that plant was in the ground, probably up to here. Um, 
So that's what we're looking for, that nice light one long white stock. So we're gonna get some pulling done. So we've got the leaks pulled. It's kind of quite a workout. I don't go to the gym because I do kind of crap like this all the time and I don't know, I think it keeps me in shape. Anyways, got my exercise done for the day. No, I should say for the next hour. Um, now I want to show you guys how we clean and trim these bad boys out after we get them out of the field. And one thing I want to talk about quickly is these cool little knives from Johnny's Selected Seeds. Um, I don't remember the actual name of these, but they're basically just a small harvest knife. They've got a nice little serrated edge on them. They're really, really light. Um, really, really light. Um, they're probably only about eh, maybe six to eight inches long. Uh, the cutting part is probably about three and a half, four inches, and same with the, uh, same with the handle. Thank you. Um, they're really light. They're very sharp. Very sharp. Um, I love them. They're just the best thing, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, we use these for kind of everything. They come with these handy dandy sheets. Well, they don't come with them, but you got to buy them separate, uh, which you can easily put on your belt. And the sheet, when I bought these, were about, I think, $15, and the knife was about $8. Um, these are kind of like throwaway knives, but. They're amazing. Like you're not gonna throw them out until they break or until they go bad. They don't lose their sharpness that quickly, from what I've noticed. And we're harvesting anything from spinach to trimming greens with it to picking cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, you name it. Anything that's cuttable. Uh, and the only thing we really don't use these for is like hardy cabbages, uh, lettuce, uh, really anything. So they're. A very versatile tool. Um, go find them at Johnny's. I believe they still carry them. Um, yeah. Back to leaks after my quick advertisement there. So, we have pulled our leak out of the field. I'm going to find a nice, nice one for us to talk about. Say that on there, right? So, we have our leak. It was sitting in the ground like this. And like I said, this one's a little harder to see. But you can see this white section here. I'll clear some of the dirt off it. See this white section here. So this leak was in the field, or excuse me, in the ground, pretty much up to here. Um, so there was a good probably six inches where this leak was sitting in the soil. That's why it's kind of so hard to see me pulling these up. Uh, the other thing is that these have some very thick, hardy roots, uh, which really hold and grab into the soil. Um, just great. These things are beautiful. I, I'm very happy with how this crop came out, especially with the year we had. Um, the fertilizer kind of stayed in place and worked as it needed, so I'm very happy about that. And the tops and the greens are pretty nice, even for the middle of November. They're going to kind of just slowly start deteriorating as it gets colder and colder. But uh, the main part of this plant is really between, you know, here and here is where people are utilizing this. Leaky potato soup, uh, you name it. So what I want to talk about is how we trim these, how we clean them up, how we make them look pretty. Uh, and I want to kind of explain why these might be a little more expensive in the grocery store or why we might be charging a little more per pound for these is because there's a lot of work that goes into cleaning these, making them look nice and presentable for retail or wholesale markets. And um, I'm going to make it look really easy because I do... 200 to 500 out of wax, so you get pretty good at it eventually. But we're gonna take our handy dandy knife. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the, the roots here. And we're gonna take our knife and we're gonna start at the base of the root mass and we're just gonna chop it off, just like that. See these stragglers? We're gonna do another quick chop, just like that, clean them up. Boom, that's done. So we've cut the top off like that, quick, quick top off with the roots. What we're gonna do is the greens next. And uh, 
we put these into lettuce boxes, which are probably about 14 to, I don't know, 16 inches long. We sell these by the pound, so we're trying to get the most out of the size of our box to fill, fill the box. So what we're going to do is we kind of hold, I kind of pull the length leak, I kind of know the length I like. But we're going to chop about this much off, kind of like you're giving a haircut. Um, so what we're going to do next, I usually do this on the tailgate, but for purposes here, we're going to chop that off there. So we get a nice clean top to this. The last thing we're going to do here is we're going to peel back some of the cruddier looking leaves on this and kind of clean up the leaf. So we have a nice white, excuse that, we have a nice white lower stock here and we have a nice uniform cut cut up top like that. They kind of look floppy. Um, I don't go perfect with these. You know, if there's a leaf here and there that doesn't look as nice, the store can take it off. It's not going to add to the weight. Uh, the presentation's not going to kill it. Uh, we're just trying to clean these up in the field so we're not bringing a lot of the waste to the field. So, once again, we're going to chop the roots. We're going to chop the tops of the greens off and we're going to pull these back. Usually, one leaf or two leaves depending on how severe the damage is or how bad the, the leaves look uh, and to have a nice clean leaf like so. Uh, then we're going to put these into our harvest crates down below and we're going to bring them back to the wash house and we're going to just rinse off pretty much the bottoms. Uh, after we've done all this cleaning and stripping in the field they really come out of the field pretty clean. Uh, we're really working on the dirt that's on the bottom or any, any dirt that's gotten into greens as they've grown. Uh, a lot of this is actually probably filled with dirt because as it grows and as we hill, the dirt is constantly being thrown into them. Um, that's just how it kind of works in the loop world. Let me give you a fast paced uh, kind of show on how I clean these. So if you guys want to try this or race me, you can post a video as well. So we're in the pack house now. We've harvested the leeks. We've gotten them into our nice green crates here. And now we're finishing the final steps of the process with them. So what we're gonna do is take our handy dandy hose here. And we're really just trying to get the dirt off the bottoms of these and some of the dirt that's on the stems. Like I said, leeks are kind of dirty until they hit their final product. Uh, in some kitchen or a restaurant, you name it. Um, so we get as much dirt off that is visibly seen, such as this. And this is my favorite part because it really shows how shiny and beautiful these really are. So our final step is they get washed, like I said, and then we place them into one of our boxes, like this is out going out for a wholesale order as a loose case of leeks. We will weigh this to be 30 pounds, exactly. And box get closed and ship out to the customer. Beware, it's not lettuce. Eat fresh for your health. But that's a finished product for our leeks. Hopefully we'll be shipping these for a good while yet. Like I said, they're in high demand and they're running low. But we will.
keep going until we run out.